Sam, what are you feeling now? I don't know. It's his soul. It's gone. The soul. For centuries, it's been the subject of controversy, challenging some of the world's greatest thinkers, philosophers, and theologians. But what is it? Can it be measured? And what influence does it have on our existence? People mean different things when they talk about their souls. Some people are talking about having a heart, and some people are talking about feeling a connection to God, I think. The soul is what defines us as a human person. The soul differentiates us from others. Uh, the soul is a gift from God. Souls, it's a great mystery. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm more skeptical about the idea, you know, the idea. I think something that's in human beings that makes them either moral or not moral is unknowable. It's amazing how the masculine soul gets in the way. <clears throat> but not for you. You will be the perfect animal. Lewis had a great quote. He said, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. And I think that's really a very good summary of the soul. The soul is the essence of everything that we are, but it continues to exist beyond the body. Some people's concept of a soul uh, is strictly a religious concept. That is, it's the part of us that um, goes to heaven when we die, or in Eastern religions, becomes reincarnated. In the Christian tradition, we believe that the soul is timeless. It's uh, created by God. So the soul, when the body dies, the soul is united with God. The soul is God's image within us, and God invites us to know that deeper. Is it, a, is it a spirit? Is it an energy? Is it, uh, it could be any of those things. I don't know why we think there's something bigger than ourselves. I just know it's a, it seems to be universal. It comes up in every culture. Um, it seems to have come up in cave paintings, it comes up in pop songs and Shakespeare and I, I don't know, I don't know. But whatever it is, it's part of what makes us human. These are questions that it's from the beginning of time. Uh, beginning of man, I guess, is thought about what happens to your soul. Where is it? What is it that makes us different than, you know, other animals? Depending on uh, who's um, commenting, I'm either famous or infamous for denying that uh, human beings have souls. I started out uh, as a typical body-soul dualist, grew up in the Catholic Church, and of course that was assumed and taught by everybody that I knew. But the sciences have moved uh, very uh, strongly in the direction of understanding human beings purely in physical terms. Probably like a reasonably well evolved brain, um, a reasonably well involved computer that suddenly became self aware, and then once it became self aware, said, Huh, I'm thinking, and I'm this thing, and I'm a brain inside of a body, and I really feel different and separate from uh, this meat suit that I'm wearing. We are poised between something infinite out here and something infinite in here. We're like this meeting point between an inner and an outer world.
As early as the fourth century BC, the Greek philosopher Plato made extensive studies of human thought and proposed some of the earliest theories to define the soul. I believe he started with the question, how can we know about something that is eternally true, like geometry? Uh, circles, a circle is a circle, and the concept of circle has no beginning or end. So what would we have to be in order to be able to have knowledge of eternal entities? And uh, that's where he concluded that the thinking part of us must itself be eternal. So he believed that souls are eternal. Uh, they were not created, they don't come into existence, and they don't go out of existence. You can also call the form of any living thing its soul. And so he believed that plants have plant-type souls, animals have more complex souls, and then humans have the deluxe form of souls that add our capacities for uh, reason and um, what he called will, which means being attracted to non-material things, the good. Soul becomes a mystical uh, discussion in a lot of ways. But I think um, the nature of the self and how the self functions is the immediate fascination of anyone who can lift their head away from all the details of existence enough to look in that direction. It's like through the portal of self you can achieve extraordinary things. I think every, you know, in your everyday life, you have to realize there's something, you know, bigger than us. I mean, even agnostics or atheists, you know, know that there's this vast universe and that there's uh, something wondrous there. Um, I think the idea of souls particularly, I'm sure, is sort of a, a religious uh, notion, your soul rising to heaven, your soul going to hell. It's extremely important because how can you talk about um, human aspects of Christian belief if you haven't first pinned down what is a human being actually. It's pretty widely agreed now that uh, neither the ancient Hebrews nor the first Christians believed in souls. They believed that they were animated bodies. And then theology got sort of um, formulated around the notion that we are dualistic beings. Had Plato defined the soul, or was his method of thinking incomplete? Did he explain everything, or did his concept of the forms still leave larger, unanswered questions that could only be left to faith? should feel guilty, but I don't. In, in the world of supernatural, souls are the things that make us definably human. Um, and, and so when Sam doesn't have his, um, you know, we, we've, we talked a lot, I mean, really ad nauseum about what it meant. When Sam was soulless, not only did he um, not believe that he was acting irrationally, he actually said that he thought he felt like he behaved more clearly. It was just, oh, well, what's better for the world? What's better to solve this hunt? I, I think the, uh, the importance of the soul was never really understood until this season, as far as the characters go. You know, they didn't know that it was it, it was that important to uh, to a being, and not only to an individual, but important in the grand scheme of things. The human soul is not a rubber ball. It's vulnerable, impermanent, but stronger than you know. 
and more valuable than you can imagine. There is a long history in Western thinking that um, attributes human value to the soul. And this comes from a concept that goes way back in Greek philosophy, that you can organize everything that exists in a hierarchy of beings. Anything that's spiritual is above this great dividing line, and everything above it is good, whereas everything below it, including human bodies and animals and rocks and dirt and all of that, is less and less good. And so there's still a lingering um, attitude in our society that attributes um, a greater degree of goodness to something that's spiritual as opposed to something that's material. It basically comes down to it's lack of a conscience. You know, soul is, a, is, is part of your conscience. It's you know, part of being a good soul. Um, is, uh, something in your brain tells you don't do that. When we played Soul with Sam, we were just basically talking about a guy who had all these skills um, to do the job, but didn't have a conscience. And so right or wrong didn't come into it for him. It was only what's the most expedient way to get the job done. That's a really scary character. We basically just got to do a case study and what happens when you put somebody really smart with a really high level of ability in the middle of a, 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 um, a situation with no soul. It was, it was sort of a, a show don't tell situation for us. God created the material world and um, the Bible says right there in the beginning uh, after each thing that's created and God saw that it was good. Since we are created in the image and likeness of God that we, we believe that and that's from the scriptures we know we have the great potential to get in touch with our spiritual side and get in touch with God uh, and so we are predisposed you know if all things were equal to do good, we believe. Uh, but evil is always a part of the human story. Temptation is everywhere. We as human persons want to have control of our own destiny. We want to set the rules as to what is good and evil. The source of your morality, the essence of who you are, the soul again escaped as an ever-changing mystery. Then, in the early 1600s, as man began to contemplate physics and the discovery of matter, another philosopher began to pursue the understanding of the soul. Descartes is called the father of modern philosophy. I'm not quite sure he deserves that title, but he's definitely got it anyway. One of his most significant contributions was, in fact, uh, essentially reinventing the concept of the soul. Descartes was um, Catholic, he was educated in the Catholic tradition, and uh, he essentially went back to um, early uh, Greek philosophical views of the difference between body and soul. Descartes claimed that there are two kinds of substances making up reality. There's extended substance, which is matter, and there's thinking substance, which uh, includes um, minds or souls, and he used, could use those terms interchangeably, and angels. This examination of Sam and the soul and soullessness and souls and supernatural, it's like, um, it just sort of happened to kind of coincide with looking at those sort of assumptions about like Descartes, about like various other like takes on what it is to be a human being, what it is to be um, an aware, sentient, point of perception in this universe. The show itself has led us in these directions for a long time, making us look at all of these different ways of treating death, burial, afterlife, the soul. It's a natural companion of the series. In Christian belief, we understand God in three different persons, or three different ways, if you will. God who creates, uh, God who reconciles, and then God who sends his spirit to animate us. And when the soul is missing, we're lifeless, our body is dead. Substance or spirit, tangible 
or intangible, the debate over the human soul continued. Then, in the early 1900s, as science and technology further developed, one man sought to end the debate by attempting what no other had, to capture the weight of the soul at the threshold of death. Duncan McDougall was a physician, and he wanted to test whether or not, uh, when a person died, the person's body would become lighter. In other words, was there substance to the soul, and when the soul left the body, could that be measured in some way? So he took, I think, about six patients, and he, uh, these were people who had terminal illnesses and who agreed to die on his special bed that he had made that was very carefully calibrated to weigh them to, to very, very small amounts. And uh, his conclusion after six patients was that in each case there had been about 21 grams less on the table after they died that would have made sense, say, back in the first or second century in the West, because there were some philosophers who believed that the soul was actually made out of a very subtle form of matter. And if now we think we associate the concept of matter with something that has weight, it would make sense. Um, I don't take much stock in his research for two reasons. Number one, there have been many, many people who have criticized his research and have uh, said that there are ways to account for the loss of the weight apart from whether or not it was a soul. Other scientists said there's an inevitable settling of your body fluids and, and a loss and excretion of fluids um, that would more than account for a um, you know, a loss as small as that from the body. At the same time as you're measuring that 21 gram differential, you're talking about a body that is infused with a variety of different electrical frequencies. The brain generates its own kind of very signature frequency and there's a bunch of electric, like we're full of clocks. McDougall himself said that what he was trying to look into could not be proven without many, many, many more case studies. It's the same thing about proof about ghosts. You just want to believe it so badly. Um, but uh, I don't know if the hard data is really there. As inconclusive as it was, the experiment did pose another question. If the soul leaves the body when we die, where does it go? Most people believe it moves on to a better place. But what about damnation? What about the place we call hell? Uh, I warn you, uh, this could scare you. Dear Art Bell, I just recently began listening to your radio show and could not believe it when you talked about the sounds from hell tonight. The story about the digging of the hole and the hearing of the sounds from hell is very real. It did occur in Siberia. I was very hesitant to send you this. It has always haunted me. To those who discounted the Siberia sounds from hell story, it is true, and I, for one, wish it wasn't. This is Talk from the Heart. My name is Rich Bueller. Welcome to our four o'clock hour. We're devoting this hour to you and to your hearts and to open calls. Well, I first heard of the story of drilling to hell from my radio audience on my radio talk show. People started calling and asking me about whether or not there really was a time when Soviet scientists had drilled into the Earth's crust in a very, very deep hole had put a microphone down the hole, had heard torment uh, through the microphone, and became concerned that they had, in fact, became fearful, terrified, that they had drilled into hell. A well to hell. Was this the definitive evidence to the existence of souls that mankind had been searching for? Or was the mystery just beginning to unfold? 
The name that was most mentioned when my callers called was a man who had a television ministry and an evangelistic ministry traveling around the United States. So I contacted his office and I said, I've heard about this story of uh, drilling into hell. Is it true? And the lady who answered the phone at his office said, oh, yes, it's true. We've, we've got documentation. We have a letter from a man who says that it really did happen. I got, the, uh, got this newsletter, and in the newsletter was a letter from one of their viewers who lived in Oslo, Norway. I called directory assistance for Oslo, Norway, got a phone number, and I called him up. I mean, I had him on the phone probably within a minute of looking at that newsletter. And I introduced myself and I said, uh, do you know about this story of the drilling to hell? He said, yeah, I know about that. And I said, do you have any way of knowing whether it's true or not? And he said, no, it's not true. He said, I fabricated part of it. When I first heard it, uh, I, I didn't believe it. it. It sounded to me like a fanciful tale. It sounded to me like an urban legend. Well into hell. Is there hell inside the earth? Well, no, hell is a state of mind. It's so far, I mean, we, all, we do get ourselves into hell at times, but that's where hell is. Uh, the earth does not have hell inside of it. Uh, we've drilled the earth, we've imaged the earth. We have a complete section of the earth understood, all the way to the core. Uh, that original story uh, I class as unproven. In other words, I can't find an exact origin for the story. It's just one that got out and started being circulated, and that's what frequently happens with urban legends. You have no idea where it started. The Well to Hell is, um, has existed in so many different stories in so many different countries. There was one in South America, uh, the one in Siberia, like you're talking about. Um, they're everywhere. It's a, it's a very pervasive urban legend. You know, when we do it, putting a hole in the ground or opening a door, I mean, this is all metaphor. Um, you know, these, the physical nature of all this, um, I, you know, none of us are purporting that work here for saying this is the way it actually would be. We're, you know, it's all metaphorical. Well, that's what our show does really is say, this is the lore you've heard and then here's our twist on it. Here's, here's the truth under the story that you've heard. We really wanted the season to be like Chinatown and we felt like, um, you know, we needed what was the water supply that everybody was fighting over, and, and, and we decided that it was this well of souls from purgatory. In the past, I don't think that they knew how big of a deal it was, uh, how, you know, how hot of a currency it is. They're essentially, you know, a, a little, you know, nuclear power plant um, that produce so much energy and so much power that when collected, it can be very, uh, it can be very, very bad uh, if it's in the wrong hands. When Crowley was making a deal with Bobby and he was like, the power doesn't come from me, it comes from your soul, we start to see this connection between human souls and let's say the collective human soul um, and the operative power in this universe. It's like water rights. We're seeing that Castiel is using souls as uh, ammunition in his war in heaven. And now it's this collection of souls that the angels are going after to get them, get them power for all the, the stuff that's going on in heaven. And of course, Sam and Dean are kind of going, wait, 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 what? It fits into our universe very well, because if they cannot get some form of worship and attention and um, adoration from human intention and the power of human souls and their attention, then they fade from existence. Challenging. It was one of the more challenging things to um, execute. Everyone had strong opinions about the nature of the human soul. Turns out, turns out we're a more introspective bunch than we seem. We're a bunch of sort of comic book geeks. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, luckily we had a lot of story 
Um, and the plot and the structure helped to guide us because we had, um, you know, it was useful that we had these things that we had to fulfill. The series has educated us, and even we've educated ourselves as writers and planners of what this series might be, as to what the human soul is and what its potential is. And it's gone from being a victim to being potentially the only real power in town. I think with Christians and, and with all religious people, there is a, a danger zone because we do believe in the supernatural. And many of us have experienced the supernatural and, and perhaps we've heard stories that we would accept as credible supernatural stories. And so the problem for a Christian uh, is to say, how can we deny that humans have an immaterial soul without denying that at the same time that we have the uh, typical higher capacities that are usually attributed to the soul, such as the ability for a relationship with God, such as the capacity for emotion, morality, and even rationality. There used to be gods and stories about everything, because about the moon, about volcanoes, about lightning, because these were all things that humans didn't understand. and. Um, Science has effectively killed those gods one after another after another, and only one great one remains. Science is not always correct. You've told me that. It's often in error. You've told me that. So how do I not know that there are caverns deep inside the earth with devil figures running around, that there are sounds and screams? There are stories that such is true. When I encounter people that come out and say, I believe there's a hell down there, I say, go for it, enjoy it. And I, I embrace you your beliefs, I don't believe it, but that's okay that you do. The bottom line is, is, is nobody here knows what a soul is. It's like asking what love is. One person says, uh, when you get goosebumps. One person says, when you can't live without them. One person says, when you would live without them because you know that's what they want. So there are so many conflicting ideas. A lot of our life is about making a leap of faith. And so the ultimate leap of faith will be at our death. Uh, because it is a mystery what God has in store for us. Human intention makes miraculous things happen. There are people who live in a universe where magic still exists. Where I was growing up, there were superstitions that you followed. There were things that were inexplicable, but real.